Take out. So here we have the second lockup for our rowing station, and here you see I've switched from having a linear sliding mechanism for my feet to instead a spinning pendulum. And uh, that's kind of funny. It came about a bit incidentally when I posted some diagrams of this uh, on the Endless Fear Forum. Some people mistakenly assumed that I had a pivoting action. Uh, and then reflecting on that a little bit, I realized that's a much better implementation for overall robustness and reliability. When you have a linear slide like this, especially since I have to have two rails on either side, it ends up being a lot of rolling contact points. So I actually have three um, caster wheels on each side of this, six in total, but that didn't provide any side-to-side -side wheel support. So in order to have this go back and forth smoothly, especially given the sort of sideways torsion that exists, given that the cable pulls off on one side, but I've also had to have a series of wheels on the inside and outside of the rails. And all told, that would be 12 points of rolling contact. Um, and I wasn't really that comfortable with how uh, long-term reliable a linear slide mechanism like that is when you compare it to the pure simplicity of a single pivot from up above. Um, so one of my little concerns with a pivot like this is that now my legs are no longer traveling back and forth in a straight line like this, which is what you have on a sliding seat rowboat. Instead, they're moving in a little bit of an arc. But I figured given the overall height of the pivot point, um, the amount of arc and the up and down travel should be fairly inconsequential. Another kind of benefit of this arc is that it actually keeps the angle of the feet um, almost ideal because as I extend my leg, my shin bends downwards and then the pivoting motion here causes my foot to angle that way. So I maintain more or less a constant angle between my shin and my foot um, and that kind of eliminates the uh, possible need for having a pivoting foot rest on a, on a machine like this. Um, and then the, the other benefit of having a single pivot here is of course much less friction in the course of me moving the slide back and forth and then with my legs. So if you have a look here, this thing can just pivot effortlessly. Um, I've also, in this incarnation, I've machined uh, uh, pulleys for the string with ball bearings and I've replaced the actual string that I've been using. Um, in the previous one, one thing I noticed while I was pulling on it is that there's quite a bit of stretch. I was using static line from a climbing supply place. Um, and even though you don't normally feel string having stretch, when you're putting all of your body force pulling on it, there'd be about six inches of travel that I could pull without any motion on the wheel. And that kind of squishy connection to the drive chain, A, is lossy. You're wasting energy stretching the cord that you don't really get to recover. Um, and then it sort of eliminates that feeling that you have a direct coupling to the wheel and that you're really contributing immediately with your pulling effort. Um, so this here is a UHMW uh, um, uh, die. Dimena, I think is the brand name for it. So it's a super long molecular length, length polyethylene that has effectively zero stretch. So when you pull this thing, even close to its breaking force, the amount of stretching is less than 1%. Um, and the breaking force on this cable, uh, it's uh, 764, it's just over two millimeters in diameter, is actually rated for 1,600 pounds. So well above and beyond anything that I'm gonna put on it. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and so I'm hoping that this, this mechanism here with the pivot will be a lot easier to uh, fabricate without having the complexity of linear slides. Um, and it's also kind of nice because it lends itself. We need to build a roof structure for supporting the solar panels and then the framework to support this pivoting point then also becomes a framework that's going to support the solar roof. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's hook this up and see if it works as well as it looks like it will. I'm pretty excited though, just feeling it like this. The motion seems so smooth um, and so direct and lossless and I think it's going to be uh, this mock-up, I think, will represent, will be a, a true representation of how we build the final version. Um, as with anything, you need, usually need to do a few prototypes before you finalize and hone in on the design parameters. And I think with this one here, we now have a, a functional layout that we can then build up into a much prettier looking uh, final version in the next week to take with us on the sun trip.
Okay. Yes, that definitely had a more solid mechanical link. Um, but uh, a couple of times the string fell off the pulley on here, so it is a tougher or a stiffer cord than I had before. And my little mount to retain the cord in here is just on a sort of a loose slide, slot, and was uh, slot, slipped off a few times. I'm going to need to toughen that aspect up. Um, and otherwise, it was also the case where when I was at a comfortable rowing cadence, Robert was pedaling, spinning the cranks a little too fast. And whenever he was just coasting and wasn't paying attention to the gear, if I was attempting to continue rowing, um, I would often be rowing at a point where I couldn't contribute at all. It was on an easy gear, uh, gear and we were going downhill. So we're going to have to ensure that the person at the front of the bike, even if they're not in the process of pedaling, they're switching gears on behalf of the person rowing from behind because I have no idea when uh, the person at the front might just be coasting and not paying attention to the gear ratio and I'm sort of counting on them in order to keep me in the right gearing for, for a good rowing rhythm. Uh, but otherwise, the, the rigidity of this frame worked out totally good. I was not so sure uh, how much stress there would be if it would cause the parallelogram to sort of tilt back and forth and maybe uh, have friction or impact with uh, between the swinging section and the frame outside, but there's none of that at all. Um, so that makes me really confident to proceed based on this design and then do a job that we fabricate out of aluminum, try to make it lighter weight, um, and maybe with a bit wider of an opening window so you don't have these bars obstructing the view quite so much. Um, but I think we have a great working plan. Um, and I just got to build that a set of foot rests here. Um, and I noticed too that even, I was mentioning how the angle of my feet changes as I'm rowing to keep this roughly 90 degrees. Um, but ideally, when I was at full extension here, I really felt like I wanted to have almost another inch of space between my heel and the base. So I'm going to build a foot platform next. Um, and I'm going to angle that platform to make that difference so that overall my foot angle is a little more horizontal um, and not quite so perpendicular to my shins. Um, so those are the, the next little tweaks. Um, and then the most exciting tweak coming up next is you see we put a matching bar structure on the front of the trike and that's so we now have the gear in place to do a preliminary layout of the solar rooftop. Um, so those pieces of wood on the floor over there are going to make an initial structure to experiment with uh, the height of the roof itself, um, and then to validate all of the electrical performance of the solar panels uh, once we get the motors and batteries on here. So, coming up next.